All right, Mr. Mac, what do we got next? Mr. Mac, All right. Mr. Mac. Um, I think Eric will find this question a little... Uh, Terrifying? No, I think it's more up... It's kind of up your alley a little bit here. All right. So Gopher on YouTube, <clears throat> uh, he was recently in Arizona for a festival. Cool. And the he got stopped by the Kilt Police. Uh-oh. And they told him not to use a Native American Thunderbird pin as a kilt pin. The Native American uh, Native American friend had gifted him the pin to wear on his kilt. Mm -hmm. Is this a fashion faux pas? Tell him to have a coke and a smile. Um, I would I would give them a uh, one finger salute. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it, who are they to tell you what you can and can't do with your outfit? It's not like you're doing something that's over the top crazy or whatever. It's you're wearing a small accessory piece that was gifted to you by a friend that means something to you. I'm going to I'm going to guess that they it's either one of two things. Either A, they thought you were watering down true Highland dress um, by not having a proper kilt pin or they thought you were appropriating an Indian thing, Native American um, culture, yeah. Yeah, um, by wearing something um Having family in Arizona and having, you know, family who are, you know, have had Navajo as friends and my uncle who was de facto adopted into a Hopi family back in the 70s. If it's a gift, it's a gift. If this family connection is sincere, it's sincere. And so they can sod off. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. Did um, he say whether the people asking him were annoyed that it was yeah, did they get a Native reasons? American thing that he was appropriating or that it was he's mixing Scottish and Native American thing. It, it doesn't say it just says okay. that the kilt police pulled him over and Fair. questioned him. Yeah I mean and if it's a pin it's not like you're wearing sacred regalia at that point you're wearing it's probably a silver piece um, which is an art form that various tribes have different forms of um, but it's not like you're wearing you're not wearing a bonnet you know, like if you're, you know, trying to, you know, ape some Lakota or something like that, you're not, you're not, uh, it's not like you're going around making sand paintings for sale and, 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 and desecrating Navajo medicine practices. You're not, you're not dressing up like a Kachina. I mean, it's, you know, I'm, we're talking about Arizona where a bolo tie is the official necktie of the state. And those are all made by, well, traditionally were made by Native American tribes. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's not worth your energy to worry about it further. Um, you know, it's not. I don't think it, would, it was worth your time to get into an argument with them. I hope that they weren't too nasty. It's just kind of like, have a good day. Thanks for your feedback. Yeah. And yea, yeah. lo, they descended forth from Ben Nevis with two tablets, and they said unto thee, Thou shalt not wear that kilpin with that tartan here in the lesson. Yeah. So, so I, it, yeah, you have snobby people who will uh, get up in arms about that. Wearing odd pieces of jewelry as mementos, as kilt pins, that goes back like forever. Okay, you know. Um, so, so there's nothing wrong with it. It's about as traditional as anything else. Gatekeepers gonna gatekeep. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Um, you're 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 mixing two cultures. Sure. It's is it done all the time? No, but and would I do it potentially personally? Probably not. But it's not like it's not. You've not broken a cardinal sin. It's fine. Yeah. Gatekeepers are going to gatekeep. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Nothing to see here. Move along. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Mr. Mack, you have something else to? Is there? Is do we have an idea where the modern kilt pin as we know it now? For most most the kilt pin that we have. That you see everywhere is always the sword with a crest, yeah, it's, or it's something a, like that. A vertically, you, know. you mean like who came up with the sword? Yeah, is there the is there a reason pen? why it's that? I mean, it's I've always sword. wondered that. I don't actually, I don't know where yeah, the sword style kilt pin really originates because if you look back at the Victorian times, the, the old Victorian times, which I mention all the time, um, why are they redneck? <laughs> yeah, ye old Victorian times. <laughs> don't, don't assume redneck, Green and Victorian. I have, and I, I am proud of my redneck roots. Thank you very much, but. Um, you, 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 flash. <laughs> I didn't do that, just for the record. Okay. Roscoe um, Pico Train. Come shut on up. Now. Shut up. Sub -a -dip, sub -a -dip. Um. Now I lost my train. <laughs> um. I. I'm gonna. Like a pin. 
Yeah, Victorian well, times. There, there, there are blanket pins, um, which Mac can comment on, and they were just kind of like a de facto, a functional thing. But tall um, and skinny so said, is my point. Correct. Um, I think people just naturally decide that tall, skinny was a, a nicer looking shape because you, de- you see plenty of examples of uh, Victorians wearing kilt pins, which were in imitation of um, like penannular brooches and things like that. So they're actually round, um, a lot of them closer to what you'd expect like a cap badge to look like. Now, again, they were wearing them higher up on the thigh, which is how they wore them back then, because sometimes they actually were using them as a closure between the aprons. We do not do that now. The the kilt pin is a little bit of bling for your kilt. It's a slightly fun accessory that allows you to do a little something, you know, a little something different. Yeah, or represent. Like, it's great for, you know, clan representation. I think that's probably also, it probably came together with the idea of wanting to have the clan crest down there, but not wanting to have something so huge and round that it looked odd. So they thought, well, if we, we want the crest, but if we but we need to round out the design to make it something you'll actually see. So let's put us put it in front of a sword. Yeah. You know, it's probably a natural evolution like that, but I'm very curious to find out if I can where it originally came from. Yeah, that's that's a that's a a good question. I think I've, yeah, that's I've a cool thought question. about it, I like but it. I never like followed through to try to figure out where I'm the actual wondering, it's cliche. sword came from. It's yeah. kind of a cliche. So where where did it come in? Yeah. I'm gonna bet it was like early uh twentieth century. I'm going to say 20s or 30s, it probably started to pick up steam as an idea. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it's one of those where my, my you know, if I'm going to the, the KISS answer, keep it simple answer, um, it's somebody did a sword design and it took off and that was their top seller. So they came out with other swords and then yeah. other companies kind of copied it. And okay, well, it's just everyone likes the swords. So that's the thing now. Yeah. Yeah. But you can technically wear almost anything as a kilt pen, you know, as long as it's relatively good taste. Yeah. yeah, and and it, it, of a certain size it can't be too big, can't be too small. Mm-hmm. Like a lapel badge, wouldn't work. Any like a a, a you know WWF size belt, uh, WWE <laughs> size belt thing on the leg, too much. So you know, let's say three inches or so tall, about an inch and a half, two inches wide. You're right. in the ballpark. You're fine. Right, Mac. So uh, Carl uh, on Facebook actually apparently did some research for us here. Hey, um, this beautiful. Is, he got this from Lock Heron. Uh, McGregor, McDuff, and House of Edgar uh, websites uh, when he was or when he was in Scotland. So he got this from them when from he was the over manufacturers. There. Um, yeah. So we'll see. It says it was allegedly ba- based on the Claymore we with the clan yeah. crest to show the clan, which would have been passed down right. and made of pewter or silver, and it would have been around the 1900s when it became a bit more representative. Yeah. So yeah. that's where he got it. It's from a little there. earlier than I was thinking, but that that sounds. Sounds reasonable. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate that. See, it's a team effort. Indeed. So it's Indeed. a zeitgeist. It's a group Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. All right, Mr. But Eric. I am pro Thunderbird kilt pins, for the record. Thunderbird. Oh, I'm thinking Thundercats. Now I want to see I'd, a lion kilt pin I, with the yeah the <laughs> s- yeah. sword. You know. Yes. And with a, with a, with a, the the fifth the, the the gauntlet thing. Yeah, and it shoots like the the Thundercats mm. symbol into the sky. Mm. Awesome. Thundercats. Oh! Snarf, 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 snarf. All the 80s cartoon references. Um, uh, If you have worn an alternative piece of jewelry as a kill pin, show us. I've seen all kinds of cool stuff, especially in the nerd community. Hey, this is the part where I'm supposed to say like and subscribe, and I do want you to do that, and check out the videos and all that good stuff. But what I really wanted to say real quick is that my favorite motto ever on a kill pin, or a clan badge is illegitimi non carborundum which is kind of a pig latin for don't let the bastards grind you down that is essential to keep in mind when you're getting into this stuff you will find haters you will find people who don't like what you're doing and we live in a multicultural society where things are going to get mixed and there is joy in that so don't let those people get to you keep doing what you're doing and enjoy the journey